Hi everyone and welcome to The Well-Educated Artist. Today we are going to be making acrylic skins, but if you've seen my other acrylic skin videos, those are some very simple ways to make acrylic skins for jewelry and other projects. And there's really sky's the limit to the kind of projects you can do with acrylic skins. I think I've made about 12 videos so far on acrylic skins and how to use them. But today the bloom skin is gonna be a whole new thing. They're a lot of fun to make, but they do have a different recipe they are totally different you can modify them you can keep them the same if you're not sure what i'm talking about when i say a bloom skin there are great painters out there like milky way art i know the painted dreamer does some where they are modified blooms this is an example of a modified bloom and you can see it right here this is just a tile and this is just a mock-up piece that i was working on earlier and uh, you can get an idea for the style of the skin that you can make. Mine are usually very iridescent and people tend to use iridescent paint so you get a lot of shine with these and they have really cool cells and these the cells have been modified. So what we're going to do is we're going to make them. Now what I have here is just a silicone mat. It has edges so they do make mats with edges. There are round ones, there are square ones. You can use any kind of silicone mat. And usually I use a silicone mat with a tray. This is normally what you're going to see me use, just a silicone mat and a tray. This allows me to move it around. And I will come back to my tray because it just makes it easier for me to work with. You also can use freezer paper. Now this is just freezer paper right here and I have wrapped it around an old canvas. So this is just a 16 by 20 canvas that way if you don't have a tray, you can pick this up and move it. You can make an absolutely huge skin with using freezer paper. And uh, you can actually store them on the freezer papers as well. So that makes it very easy. So we just need a base. This is simply house paint. It could be any color. It could be house paint lying around. Some paint works better than others. This is just antique white from Walmart one of the cheapest places that you can get house paint, just basic house paint. And there's a little bit of Floetrol in here. You don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin for your bloom. And if you get them too thick, it takes a long time for them to dry. And a lot of house paint does take a long time to dry. And it's the only drawback here, but I, you know, Floetrol actually makes things dry a lot slower too, in my opinion. So, you know, it's really not that much different than a regular skin. So that's our base. Now our colors. Most of my colors I'm gonna be using are Color Arts Primary Element colors. Those are just pigments, and you're going to add them to a medium. Okay, what I use, and a lot of people do use this, it's the Deep Base 8300 from Bare High Gloss Enamel, and it is basically paint without any color in it, but it's made for darker colors. And I use it with the Joe Sonia Gloss Varnish. There are other varnishes you can use, like polycrylic. I use the Joe Sonia, and it just works for me. Sometimes I add a little bit of water if they've gotten thick, and it doesn't seem to cause a problem. So that's all that's in these paints. So you need very little paint or very little pigment. You're gonna put just a little bit in there, and then you're gonna mix it with the Joe Sonia and the Deep Base, or the varnish and the, the house paint base, which is exactly what it is. Now, the consistency looks sort of like this. Now this is actually paint here, and I'm gonna go over my colors. These will all be found in the description box below, so if you click on the title, you can get the colors and the recipes that I use. And like I said, there are a lot of them out there that you can use. This one is actually paint. This one is uh, folk art, and it is Aqua Flash, which is a color shift paint and I use it quite often. So it's a little bit of the premier, premier folk art paint. It's not the super cheap craft paint, but it does work for this, so you can use it. Um, the same for this. This is actually, um, I believe this is Anita's uh, Sapphire Blue, and it's just a paint. And all of these are metallics, so it works fine. Just the same consistency. Sometimes you have to thin it out a little bit more but uh, no big deal. And then I have DecoArt 24 karat gold, which is just a mainstay for most pore painters. And there's also Peacock Pearl, which is from DecoArt as well. This one is actually a pigment, but it is Reflex Violet from Pearl X. Pearl X has a whole line as well. And this one is mixed with Arteza Shocking Lime and some regular lime colored paint from Liquitex. So I just made my own there because I wanted a certain color. 
Now the rest of these are color art colors. So this is dark emerald, which almost looks like a blue, but it's dark emerald, what they call it. Then there's sunburst, snapdragon, one of my favorites, and plumeria, then orange peel, and uh, that's what I've got. So those are the colors we're gonna be using. I may throw in another type of gold, I'm not sure, but that's the colors that I'm gonna be using. I'll just put them over here. Now, we want to pour our base, and uh, I'm just going to take this and uh, pour some base, and actually, I'm not gonna use this mat. I'm going to use my old standby mat here. Let me go ahead and get rid of that one. There's nothing wrong with it. I actually just got those. There's so many different size mats. There's round ones, there's square ones. You can spin this if you want and use the round silicone mats. I have some ordered, but I haven't got them yet. Um, I do usually spin my, my blooms, so you can still do that if you like to, but I'm gonna show you the basics here. Okay, so here's my tray with my silicone mat, and I'm just going to pour some base. I'm gonna check it. Hopefully it's not too thick. It's been sitting under the lights here, and uh, that tends to make it thicker. So, it's pretty thick. We'll see. Okay, that's plenty. It's not always the thicker the better on this, so. Try to mix your paint ahead of time so that you don't have a lot of bubbles. I'm just gonna tilt this just a little bit. Thin down that paint a little bit. It's better that it's on the side than it is in the middle, so I'm gonna let it kind of pull a little bit to the side. Okay. Now to do the colors, I may put them in several places. Depending on how thick my base is, sometimes we don't get fabulous coverage the first time around. I'm gonna start with my colors. I'm gonna show you how to put them down, and then as I finish up, I'll just send you on to some music and see you on the other side but I'm gonna go ahead and start with my Aqua Flash, and it doesn't really matter for me the order that it's going to be in, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that down, and I may put it in several areas. I'm going to go ahead and put my first set of colors here. You actually can do diff two different sets of colors if you want, and I may end up doing that. Put in my orange peel. I now enjoy some music while I finish this up. Okay, now we have quite a bit of color here. Now, I'm going to be doing a swipe, so you can use a cake knife. I've got several sizes of those. I love to use my number two palette knife, but it's sort of small for this one. What I'm going to be doing is using a cell activator. Actually, the cell activator has a lot to do with the paints that you put down, not just what goes on top. A lot of people use Australian Floetrol, um, but it's incredibly expensive to get it imported to America. It has a different consistency to it. It's thinner. It's probably about 60 some dollars to get it brought in. So if you want to import it, great. If you don't, you can do what I do. So this is just Amsterdam Titanium White and a lot of Floetrol and a little bit of Elmer's Glue All. Some people put wood conditioners, different things to try to mimic it but it's kind of personal preference. So this is my cell activator, and what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to apply it to the back of my knife, my dirty knife, evidently, I just put it in something. I'm gonna apply it to the back of my knife, and I am going to swipe, and it probably will not swipe all the way across, and I probably should have left um, not as much paint here, but I can swipe again and add more color, so it's not a big deal. You can do whatever you want, it's your skin. So I'm just gonna show you how I do it. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you several examples of skins. So stay tuned to the end so that you can see the different skins that I've made and I've put them on different backgrounds and that does affect your skin. So I'm just putting my cell activator and it's awful thin. I might need to put a little bit extra. 
and I'm going to run it across. And sometimes it's hard with the tray to kind of get it to lay flat, but I'm going to do that. And I'm just gonna put, I don't think I'm gonna get the bottom with this, but just very light pressure. I'm gonna push my paint along and I'm gonna have to do it in two different pieces. Okay, that's fine. Wipe off your knife. The further you swipe it out also, the more pastel it's going to be. That's another thing. And I'm probably gonna to have to turn it around to swipe this. You may also use Yuba paper to swipe with. You can use transparency film. There's all kinds of things you can swipe with. Okay. I probably don't even need all that much. I am going to go ahead and swipe. I may pull a little bit of this other. Okay. I noticed that I didn't get all of mine here, which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and torch this because that's gonna allow the cells to develop. And I do not have a lot of patience, but this application does require some patience because you have to wait for your cells to develop. And you can see that some of my cells are developing right here. I'm not a patient person. So down here where I don't have as much paint, I'm going to put some more paint. Just going to add some more. I might add some more if it allows me to. And to do this, I am just going to take my number two palette knife, load up the back. I like the control I can get with a palette knife. And Just pull it. I can even add colors anywhere I want. So, if I wanna do a different color arrangement, I don't like how this is going down here. It's just gone too far and I can move that. Actually, let me go ahead and use this again to start and get these to develop a little bit more. Getting some really good cell action. That's what I'm saying. It takes time. You get some really good cell action down here, but then not so much here. And also, speaking of that, I've got a lot of paint up here. So if I want to pull here, I can. I'm going to make my cells move down a little bit. stretch them. Now where I don't have anything, if I want to do something with that negative space, I can. I have actually plenty of paint to do so. I want to use my orange here since I want to continue that orange and blue color. Hey, why not? I'm just throwing everything at it today. Now, you can modify these just like you would modify a bloom and really getting some nice action. I don't like this area, so say I don't like this area. What can I do? I can modify it. So I'm gonna go do that right now. I'm just gonna take my scare and I'm gonna use this part and I'm going to modify my blue. And that just means I'm going to make it look prettier than it normally would. I can do whatever I want to it. Okay. 
Okay. And that's just a modification. And I'm not going to modify all of it, but you can do whatever you want. It's your bloom. Oh, look how pretty that's looking right now. Okay, I'm going to show you a close up of this. And how beautiful they can be. You can just have amazing scans here. You can see where the modification was. And just look at that skin. <laughs> That's what we just did last. Gorgeous cells, beautiful lacing. Okay, I'm going to let this dry, probably for three to four days, and it may be as quick as 24 hours. It just depends on your climate and how hot. Right now it is so hot here, this will probably take about 48 hours to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. Okay, so here are some skins that I have made fairly recently. These are all bloom skins. And this one is just literally falling off of the mat. This one is fairly thick. I'm just gonna remove the silicone mat. And you can see it, it's absolutely beautiful. It almost looks like a fish tail or part of the fish's body. So depending on what you do, you can get some really great effects for the skins. And it, they're so shiny and pretty and it looks like they're wet. They could be wet fish scales or mermaid's tail. So you can use these for a number of things. This one is very thick, and as you see on the back, it is white. So no pretty flip-flop skins with this type of skin. Now, this is another skin. It looks like a tile. It's actually wrapped around a tile, so I'm gonna show you what I did. If you have tiles, what you can do if you wanna make skins is just tape a piece of your freezer paper down and uh, make a skin that way, and they will come off of this with not a lot of trouble, and you will have square skins. The other kind of skin, this one's actually wrapped around a board, and this is your um, press and seal, which I use a lot for covering cups. And uh, it gives a really cool kind of skin-like quality. Okay, so this is for a project that I was working on, and so you can just remove the press and seal and it will give you a very square skin and it will just pull off. Now the edges are not very pretty, but you can cut it in a perfect square if you want and it will pull off. Okay, so here is your skin, and you can just cut the little pieces off of it. Move the board out of the way. And there is your skin. So that's how you can make your acrylic skins on different shapes, different sizes. And you can even get really cool texture to it. Just a fun new way to make skins for your projects. And I will include the skin that we just made when it dries at the end of this video. Thanks for joining me. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. Please like and subscribe. And I'd love to see you back here. Thanks for joining me. Bye.